2020 will mark the start of a new decade for Minnesota sports. But before we dive into the new year, let's take a look back at the decade that was and some of the top Minnesota sports moments from it. Twelve days into the decade, the Minnesota Lynx made a trade that would change the direction of the franchise forever. On January 12, 2010, the Lynx sent Renee Montgomery to Connecticut in exchange for Lindsey Whalen, the point guard who became a household name while starring at Hutchinson High School and leading the University of Minnesota to a Final Four appearance in 2004. Now paired with head coach Cheryl Reeve and rising star Simone Augustus, Rebecca Brunson, and the 2011 Rookie of the Year, Maya Moore, the Lynx had found their core that would go on to reach the WNBA Finals in six of seven years from 2011 to 2017, winning four titles along the way. The decade began with the Wild in a rut. When trading for premier scorer Danny Heatley failed to solve the problem, Minnesota began to look elsewhere. The answer emerged in 2012 pair of homegrown talents, one from Minnesota and one from Wisconsin. The signings were announced simultaneously on the 4th of July. Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter, two of the most coveted free agents of the decade, would sign with Minnesota. The two would go on to deliver six consecutive playoff appearances for the state of hockey. Would Adrian Peterson ever be the same? It was a fair question back in 2011 when Peterson suffered a devastating knee injury. The outlook was grim, a torn ACL and an uncertain timetable for his return. But AP turned a devastating prognosis into one of the best seasons in NFL history. He entered a week 17 showdown with Green Bay, just 102 rushing yards away from the seventh 2,000 yard season in NFL history. Against the Vikings' biggest rival, Peterson made up the difference and then some. He rumbled past the Packers for 199 yards and a touchdown, coming up just eight yards short of Eric Dickerson's single season rushing record. It was enough for a Vikings playoff berth and an MVP honor. After 19 tries, the Timberwolves finally won the lottery. The Wolves added one of the most important players in team history after securing the top pick in the 2015 draft. Carl Anthony Towns wouldn't just go on to help the Wolves return to the playoffs. He's since become one of the league's premier big men. As comfortable behind the arc as he is in the paint, Towns was a game-changing pick for the Wolves. Long played with mediocrity and off-the-field issues, the Gopher football program hit the reset button with the hiring of the electric P.J. Fleck as head coach in 2017. Fleck brought his row the boat mentality, along with a long list of other sayings and mantras, to TCF Bank Stadium. Although the Gophers collected just five wins in Fleck's debut season, they have improved ever since. Minnesota snapped a 14-game losing streak to rival Wisconsin in 2018 and jumped onto the national scene a year later with a 10-win season to close out the decade. Signed in the spring of 2017 to back up Sam Bradford, Case Keenum quickly took over as a Viking starting quarterback and with the help of Mike Zimmer's fearsome defense, led the team to a 13-3 record. That run brought them face to face with the New Orleans Saints, the same team that ended Brett Favre's magical 2009 season at the beginning of the decade. While Favre fell short, Keenum and Stefan Diggs pulled off a miracle on a play dubbed Buffalo Wright 7 Heaven. Diggs caught a 61-yard pass and danced into the end zone as time expired for a 29-24 win and a spot in the NFL championship game. It marked the first postseason contest in NFL history to end with a game-winning touchdown on the final play of the fourth quarter. The first decade of the new millennium began with the Gophers' ascent, an eight-year run in the NCAA tournament, back-to-back -back national championships in 2002 and 2003, and another trip to the Frozen Four in 2005. But while the 2000s were defined by college hockey's old superstars, the 2010s were all about a seismic shift and new blood. As the Gophers rebuilt, teams like Minnesota State and St. Cloud State morphed into contenders. Minnesota Duluth emerged as one of the game's modern dynasties. The Bulldogs were coming off back-to-back -back national championships after winning their first in 2011 under head coach Scott Sandlin. 
A three-sport star at Creighton Durham Hall and the top pick of the 2001 MLB draft, St. Paul's own Joe Maurer signed an eight-year extension in 2010 to keep him with his hometown team for the entire decade. Maurer's injuries forced him to give up catching, but he still produced with the bat and wrapped up a 15-year career in 2018. The former MVP returned behind the dish for one pitch in his final game in front of an emotional target field crowd on September 30th, 2018, providing a perfect ending to an historic career. Maurer's number seven was retired the following season. A playoff regular throughout the 2000s, the Twins went through a period of profound change during the last decade. Derek Falvey and Thad Levine arrived in the front office to usher in a new era. And while it took a few years for the new front office to work its magic, the results were hard to argue with. The true breakthrough arrived in 2019 alongside a few new faces. Manager Rocco Baldelli, the youngest skipper in the majors, and veteran designated hitter Nelson Cruz, one of the game's preeminent power hitters. The front office's plan was clear. The Twins would power their way back to the top. That strategy was more effective than anyone could have expected. The Twins won the AL Central for the first time since 2010, hitting a major league record 307 home runs. The Bomba squad fell short in the playoffs, running into the only other team to hit 300 home runs. But while the Yankees came out on top again, the Twins have set themselves up nicely as the 2020s begin. The landscape and the skyline in the Twin Cities looks a little different as this decade comes to a close. The 2010s were all about breaking new ground. The University of Minnesota kicked things off in 2009 with the opening of TCF Bank Stadium. Across town, the Twins were putting the finishing touches on a new home of their own. Target Field finally opened in 2010, becoming one of the top ballpark destinations in Major League Baseball. The Vikings joined the Gophers at TCF a few years later, but they wouldn't stay for long. The Metrodome was demolished in 2014, paving the way for U.S. Bank Stadium in downtown Minneapolis. Big things were happening over in St. Paul as well. The Wild moved into Tria Rink in 2018, sharing their new practice facility with one of the newest teams in town, the NWHL's Minnesota Whitecaps. And finally, Allianz Field opened this year, giving Minnesota United fans a home of their own.